The following programme is made possible by the friends and partners of Creation Today. Only the biblical worldview makes sense of science. Don't believe me? Well, then you're going to have to argue with my friend Rob Webb. He's a rocket scientist. Listen to this. Rob worked on the guidance, navigation, and control department uh, in that department for several years for the interplanetary programs for NASA. This included designing and operating the GNC, the Guiding, Guidance Navigation Control Systems, that sent satellites and rovers to Mars, Jupiter, uh, asteroid explore, exploration missions. Uh, Rob was the lead, leading navigation engineer for various NASA programs, including the Parker Solar Probe mission, which is the one that touched the sun, and the International Space Station commercial resupply missions. Welcome to the Creation Today Show, where we bring together interviews with experts and solid Bible teaching. Your host, Eric Hovind, affirms the ultimate authority of God's Word, the truth of creation, and why it matters to you. Rob, welcome to the Creation Today Show, buddy. Dude, what's up, man? You know, just uh, just hanging out, living life here at the Creation Museum here in Kentucky. Nice uh, rainy day. So I don't know what 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 part of uh, the country are you in? I'm in Pensacola, Florida. So down here in uh, okay. Uh, it's, yeah, it's down into the like oh high fifties right now. Kind of oh, rough. Oh man, uh, yeah. See, I'm actually 60. from Arizona, so I'm, I'm used to the really hot, you know, hundred degree <laughs> temperature uh, summers, you know, and the nice uh, winters. We actually just uh, flew to Christmas. We flew home uh, to Christmas for uh, to Arizona. It was like seventy five degrees for Christmas. So that's your kind of Christmas, pops. huh? It's pretty nice. So I love it, man, dude. Uh, what a time to be alive, huh? Yeah, absolutely. Amen. I mean, the things that you've gotten to do, that where technology is at, what we're learning about the world, uh, the 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 Christianity, uh, unbelievable time to be alive. Hey, now, listen, I got a lot of questions for you. I got to get my top three off my chest yeah. right away okay since this is the first time we've really gotten to hang out all right so here we top go. three top three questions how much money does the government waste is nasa one big conspiracy theory because the earth is really flat and since you designed the guidance navigation department or we're in that department does your wife ever have to call you and ask for directions go <laughs> let's see all right so the first one um yeah so nasa is not a conspiracy um like a lot of the flat earthers out there say and uh it's funny we actually we just ended a, a a series that me and Danny Falker have been doing. It's called Flatline. Uh, so every every Tuesday night at 6 p.m., we were doing like a live stream where we were able to uh, uh, go over a lot of di the different flat earth, you know, conspiracies and all the observations that they, all the questions that they bring up. So kind of sad that that's ending. But if you guys want to know more about that, definitely check that out. It's on our Creation Museum uh, YouTube channel as well as uh, Answers in Genesis Facebook. But um, yeah, and then as far as like navigation goes, um, yeah, I was guidance and navigation control for a lot of different uh, programs that sent spacecraft all over the solar system. Um, so yeah, uh, my wife, she asked me for directions a lot. So <laughs> <laughs> how I kind of describe it um, when, with my job, what I used to do is imagine like you're trying to drive somewhere, you pull out your GPS on your phone, you know, it kind of gives you like step-by-step -step instructions, turn here, turn here. It's, it's basically the same thing with rockets, except we're doing it 600 times a second, so a lot faster. Um, so every hey. time um, a little disturbance will, or perturbation will hit the rocket, then it'll automatically readjust it and go back onto its trajectory. So that was kind of my job, was designing all the algorithms. I went into the flight computer and then upload it. So it was kind of an important thing to do because you want to be able to uh, launch to where you're actually aiming to. So, um, of course, I did it all to the glory of God, so that was the, that was the great part. I forgot what your other question was. What was what was the third one? Yeah, so uh, is NASA a conspiracy? How much money does gov the government waste? <laughs> oh, yeah, yeah, it's it it is a lot. It can so sometimes be a lot. Um, some of these programs were in the millions and sometimes billions of dollars, you know. And so, wow. um, yeah, I don't know if want, we want to go there this episode or not. But yeah. in terms of the no. private versus the the government sector, no, there's... not not necessarily. We all like Elon, and we know that. Okay, um, yeah. The uh, but I do want to get into uh, here in a few minutes. I want to get into the like the purpose of all of these and how much is there an evolutionary purpose? Where we're really spending money for that, but we'll get into that in just a second. <clears throat> Excuse me. Hey, if you guys are uh, listening, tuning in uh, via YouTube or Facebook, welcome to the Creation Today Show. If you're new to the show, uh, my name is Eric Coven, and we're just on a mission to disciple the world one person at a time, and we do that through conversations like these. We just want to help turn stumbling blocks 
that keep people from coming to see Jesus as the creator and savior into stepping stones so they can truly have a relationship with him. Uh, I want to thank you guys for hanging out with us. Hey, to our podcast listeners, I'm so glad you guys are are joining me today. Uh, thank you guys. I know this isn't live for you, but I love watching you guys download the show. Love getting the feedback. So send your comments to comments at creationtoday.org. And then for our television audience around the world, guys, we love the stations that broadcast this show. Please send them a thank you note and let them know how thankful you are that they are airing the Creation Today show. All right, my partners, I got all you guys on here. This is awesome. Amber and Andrew and Bev and Gary and Jill. And uh, I can't see everybody here, but thank you guys for hanging out. What a great time to be alive in this new year. Um, I am I'm really excited about this conversation because I, I started off saying you can't you can't do science unless it's in the Christian worldview. Okay. Now, Rob, that's a that's a sounds especially to somebody who has not understood the worldview or does not believe in the worldview. That sounds incredibly arrogant. Uh, can we can we back this claim up? You're the rocket scientist. I wanted to ask you. You're the one who worked as a Christian in the secular world. Uh, that's a bold claim. Can you back it up? Can you only do science in a Christian worldview? Yeah, uh, that's that's actually one of the interesting things that I experienced when I was in the rocket science industry. I was in the aerospace industry for about ten years, and over and over and over again, you would always hear that claim. You know, uh, things like evolution is science, uh, Big Bang is science, millions of years is science, and belief in the God and and the Bible. But, well, that's just religious, and so you basically we're living in a culture today that's essentially hijacked science mm -hmm. and basically convinced the whole world. Uh, that science is only possible in this atheistic kind of naturalistic worldview. And what I mean by naturalistic, meaning uh, nature is all that that there is. It's only just matter in motion. And basically just check your Bible at the door in order to do science. But a lot of the times, a lot of these atheists, these these secular atheists that bring up these these viewpoints, they don't realize that science is founded on the biblical worldview, like you were saying, the Christian worldview. So it's not just any worldview. And, and what we mean by worldview is is how you actually view reality, how you actually look at everything around you. Um, it, it, it basically comes down to two different things that we say here all the time at the ministry. It's either man's word or God's like, word. Which one are you placing your ultimate authority into? Um, are you placing your your hope and in, in your, in your, in your knowledge claims based on man's word and man's beliefs? Because it really is just a belief system about the past. Or are you going back to God's word what he plainly says in Genesis, like he created everything. He created the heavens and the earth. Um, and are, are we basing ourselves on that as Christians or not? So um, that's just kind of give you a quick flavor there of um, just a high level overview. And um, this is something I had to deal with with constantly on a month-to-month on a -month basis when I was in the industry. Okay, so is there a secret pile of evidence that the evolutionary scientists are keeping away from you Christian scientists where you're like, like, well, you're just, you're not in the know because, you know, you don't agree with us. We're not going to show you this evidence that we have that really supports our worldview. That's what, it, that's, that's what I think a lot of the misconceptions come from. A lot of the Christians today, they think if I just had enough evidence, you know, I'll be able to convince anyone of my side and, and not, not to say that evidences aren't good. Evidences are great. You know, um, we can talk about, you know, DNA and, we can see information. We can see language within our body systems. We can look at the the order of the solar system. We can look at the planets. We can look at all these different great things in nature. Um, but I want to go a little bit deeper than that in terms of, well, how do we actually know what we know? How can we even do science to begin with? Because really, if you think about it, science is really based on kind of uh, kind of a few different main principles. You know, um, first, you have to assume, does knowledge and truth exist, right? And do True. we have minds that act, can actually understand the universe around us? And number three, do we have order? Uh, do we have consistency? Do we have uniformity in nature? And if you think about it, like going back to that Christian worldview, we have a basis for that because we're made in the image of God. We have minds that can understand the universe around us. We can understand God's creation. Um, in the naturalistic worldview, if we're just matter in motion, if we're just, uh, you know, goo to you, fish to philosophers, if our if our brains are just fizzing gas is basically what they say. You know, we, we have these <laughs> brains, their skulls are just fizzing thoughts. You know, things like knowledge, uh, logic, rationality, those things are not even possible right. in that worldview. So you, you actually see every time an atheist uh, does science, and don't get me wrong here, this is, a, this is another misconception that some people have is, um, you know, atheists, they can still do science. And they do right. science really, really well. But it's because they're borrowing from the biblical worldview to even do so. They're borrowing things like laws of logic. 
uh, rationality, uh, depending on the uniformity in nature. And what I mean by that is simply that the future will be like the past, right? So that when we do an experiments, we do a consistency in that consistent kind of manner, we can expect the same results. And that's only possible if God has spoken his order into creation. Um, without that, you know, if you start with the big bang, we, you start with evolution where, you know, just o over time, random chance acting on matter, you can't have those things. And so really, um, it's only possible in the biblical worldview. And so as Christians, we should be excited about that. You know, we should, we should be going out there studying God's creation. Cause like Psalm 19, one says the heavens declare the glory of God. Yeah. So by us studying creation, we're getting to know more about God's character and his awesomeness that he created from that very beginning. So really that's what we need to base ourselves on as Christians. Well, I think that that thought process is powerful and it's really, it comes down to uh, the, and I know Bodhi talks about this and Jason, uh, Dr. Lyle talks about this and the ultimate proof of creation. And it comes yep. down to when you realize these things, and I'm making notes here on what you said, we live in an ordered universe. Well, what makes sense of an ordered universe? We we assume that knowledge and truth exist. <clears throat> well, what makes sense of that? So if you don't start with God, you you can't get, I mean, there's, there's really no other alternative, right? It's either uh, atheistic evolutionary thought process of random chance and we just popped into existence, or somebody created the heavens and the earth. I mean, do you know of any other choices out there that people are trying to spew right now? It yeah, seems I mean, like it's... it really just comes down to it. It's a battle of worldviews right now. We have man's world versus God's world. It's actually more specifically, it's a battle of two different religions. Um, we actually have a, a great wow. book series at our bookstore, Answers in Genesis. The, all, all We go over all the different world religions and cults that are out there. And when you really boil it down, um, it's either man's word or God's word. If it doesn't come from the mind of God, it comes from the mind of man in one shape or form or the other. You know, I think about Hinduism, Buddhism, um, any of the other uh, Eastern mysticism uh, religions that are out there. Um, all of those are based off of man's word. So really, it's a battle of religion. So there is no neutrality. And that's what's something you hear all the time in the science debate is, you know, let, let's just be neutral. Let's just uh, approach the facts with a neutral kind of uh, bias, but really that is impossible. Like our Lord Jesus Christ says, you know, you're either with me or against me. Um, and so everyone brings a worldview to that evidence. And so that's really what it's all about. It's, it's what, what is your belief system about the origins, about where we came from, who we are, what, what is our purpose? Where are we going? You know, some of those basic philosophical questions, um, big word for, for today here is, is called epistemology. Now don't <laughs> let that word scare you. All that word means is, is the theory of knowledge. How do we know what we know. So anytime uh, someone makes a knowledge claim, for example, they say, I know this because of this, they're making a knowledge claim. And so that's a question of epistemology. So e even even today, universities all around the country right now, uh, they're, they're studying these things. They're studying epistemology. They're studying that theory of knowledge, how they know what they know. But it goes back to, well, are we basing ourselves for that knowledge on God's word? Or is it on man's word that says there is no meaning? that we're just matter in motion, that um, everything is just is just material. Um, but again, of course, like we like uh, Jason Laub, I think, puts it so well. Um, for example, laws of logic, they are immaterial. You can't stub your toe on the law of logic. You can't uh, taste, smell or touch those things. So um, again, every time a, a, an unbeliever, you know, is, is doing science and again, they can do science, great science, of course. And um, I, I, I used to work with a lot of these guys that 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 rejected God and um, and, and we, we would work together and we would do these great missions, but in order to do so, they have to borrow biblical worldview to even do so. So I'm curious, mm, working in the industry, working with so many people that reject uh, a biblical worldview, um, do you think you got a better understanding? We know the scripture says they suppress the truth and unrighteousness. That's great. So I go, I'm going to believe God's word over their word. What was your experiential uh, outworking of that, I'll call it, of that biblical truth? Is that, did you see the same thing? Did, did what you observe align with what the Word of God says there when you spent 10 years of people that completely disagree with you? But what are your thoughts there being in, in the industry? That, that That's one of the things that once I realized that, that really just changed my complete perspective. Once I realized, because... When I first became a Christian, I became a Christian around 2012, so a little over 10 years ago. So I was actually not a Christian my whole life. I actually, uh, I grew up in an atheistic home. Uh, both, both my parents were atheists, so um, I, I didn't grow up, grow up going to church. I didn't grow up with the Bible. I, I didn't really know who Jesus was or anything like that. Yeah. 
Um, it wasn't until 2012, about a year after I got married is when I actually got saved. And when I first became a Christian, I thought it was all about, you know, let's just come to the evidence in a neutral fashion. Um, let me just throw as many facts on you as possible. And, and, and afterwards, how could you not believe in creation? How could you yes. not believe in God's word? And I slowly started figuring out that doesn't work. Like I kept, I, I would go up to a lot of my secular colleagues and say, look at all this evidence, look at all this great confirmation of biblical creation. And they would just basically say, so what? I, I don't, I don't see it that way. I don't interpret that way. And I, I just kept thinking like, why, why am I not getting across to them? And it's at this moment, I started discovering, you know, uh, websites like Answers in Genesis and ICR and Institute of Creation Research. And I started watching videos from Ken Ham and, and all these different guys. And I started realizing it's not about that. It's about the interpretation of the evidence. Everyone has a worldview. Everyone's they're They're not neutral. Like Romans one says, you know, they suppress the truth and unrighteousness that every single human being has the knowledge of God. But the problem is they don't want God in their lives the same way a criminal doesn't want to have a cop in their lives <laughs> because they love their sin. And that's really what it comes down to. A lot of people ask me, you know, um, you know, you have all these, all these so, so-called great scientists that, that believe in evolution. Um, why is there so many scientists that believe in evolution in millions of years? And I, I just say simply, it's one word, sin. It's, it, that's really what it comes down to. Um, and they love their sin. Like it says in John chapter three, they love the darkness and they hate the light lest their deeds be exposed. And so really that's what it's all about is we need to go down to that, that presuppositional level there, presuppositional level, meaning, um, that basic understanding that fundamentals of their worldview. Um, and until we get down to that worldview level, um, we're, we're going to have a difference of interpretation all day long. You know, we, we can try to attack all the different, um, I, I don't know if you've, you've seen Ken Ham's fa famous castle diagram that he does all the time in a lot of his presentations, you know, he's got all the balloons hanging on the castle and, um, really it's, it's, it's great to attack those, those kind of top level issues. But until we get down to that worldview, uh, discussion, we're not really going to make much headway. Yeah. And so that's what. Um, that that's what we see in reality. And that's all also what, what we see in God's word here. And it's God's word alone that, that gives us that, that foundation, that basis, uh, that when we're talking to unbelievers today, man, so well said, I, I I'm like, man, that is, that is like Twitter worthy right there. Criminals <laughs> don't want cops in their life unless they're crooked cops. And in yeah, the same way, yeah, exactly. sinners don't want God in their life unless they can make their own God and make him a crooked God. That's okay with their sin. I was like, whoa powerful way to say that um I, I okay i am curious on the financial thing because i look at i, I did a show last week with milt marcy and we talked about i don't have the book with me in here talked about um the the origins of the old earth worldview how we came up with this idea that is now taken over and given its supposed scientific justification and the lives of the men who developed the theory and showed that really their theory was as a, it was their science and their interpretation of science was really a way to discredit the Bible. That's the whole reason it was invented. They wanted to get rid of God. Um, and so we see the last 200 years, a little more than 200 years of science being done really in a more atheistic worldview. It's, 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 been, it's been done as an attempt to prove there is no God. It's not just that they said, hey, science is only going to deal with the natural and ignore the supernatural. It's that they purposely want to ignore and disprove, if they could, the supernatural. So when it comes to trying to prove evolution in science, you're, you've been part of missions to space, to Mars, to all these different places. How much of the reality behind the scenes is we're still trying to prove some kind of evolutionary theory. We're still trying to prove Big Bang. We're still trying to prove stars form. We'll st we're still trying to prove life could evolve somewhere else. How much of our money are we using to do that? Like, I, don't really, I know you won't have an actual yeah. figure, but what's the point of these? Yeah, and that's that's something I saw all the time. For example, I, I, I used to do a lot of, I used to do a lot of um, uh, Mar Mars missions, for example. I, I used to work on a mission called MAVEN. Um, so that's one of the orbiters that goes around Mars. And... Typically, that's what you see time and time again. A lot of these NASA missions, um, a lot of their funding goes into uh, the search for extra, you know, ET, all, all the different alien life. Um, you know, the, um, the the basis for that is they think, well, if life evolved on Earth, it had to evolve elsewhere. And so they're desperately looking for that evidence somewhere. 
and they think that well maybe mars might have had like a global ocean it, it's actually funny they, they actually the scientists who will reject that there was a global flood on earth they will accept that there could have been a global flood on mars but it, it cracks me up every time because you look at the big picture here earth is covered in what 70 percent water so like yeah. three quarters of the earth is covered in water whereas you look at mars today it's a desert planet i mean there is no liquid water on there it, it can't sustain any liquid water because there's not enough pressure there's not enough temperature on it yet they believe still that there could have been a global flood so it just it just cracks me up with that worldview again um yeah but time and time again you know with, with these type of missions it's always that search for extraterrestrial life that they're looking for because they want to uh, they want to justify their evolutionary beliefs and they're getting desperate for it because um, ev everything we see around us, it doesn't support evolution, it, but it does support biblical creation. So they're they're basically kind of grasping at straws. And you notice that the more and more that they study uh, the universe around us, you kind of see their theory falling apart. But every time you bring it up to them, they have what's called rescuing devices. They're, they're always going to have a way to rescue their theory. Uh, for example, we just had a conversation when Jake, Jason Lyle, me and Danny Falcon did talking about the James Webb Space Telescope. And one of the main driving forces of the James Webb Space Telescope was that was to look for uh, possible alien worlds and life outside of our of our uh, solar system and the galaxy and all that. And and it's funny, like the more and more uh, James Webb keeps collecting more data, we're realizing that, um, you know, everything that the Big Bang is predicting is not coming true like they thought they were. They're finding all of these fully formed spiral galaxies, so-called early on in the universe is what they say. Um, and so it just, a time and time again, every time we explore more, we learn more about God's creation through science. We're learning more about science is actually confirming God's word and it's not confirming the man-centered um, opinions. Really, it's, it's just opinions, the religious beliefs of our origins. And um, it's, and, and it's the same thing with Mars as well. And, and same thing with some of these Jupiter missions I used to work on. Uh, the more we study a lot of these planets, we're starting to figure out, you know, um, no, these planets are not that old. Uh, there's, there's lots of things around them. For example, Saturn, um, Saturn has a lot of different, um, uh, unique characteristics that point to a, a, a young earth that's impossible in an old earth frame. So, um, e even Pluto as well, when, when we sent the new horizons spacecraft to Pluto, we we discovered Pluto was a very active planet, and they just they just thought it was just some dead rock that was out there in the solar system. They didn't expect to have any kind of uh, volcanic activity or anything like that. And finding that, I mean, it just it blew their minds from the evolutionary mind, but from a biblical creation, that's something we would expect to find. We would expect to find Pluto with with volcanic activity. We, we would expect to find Saturn with these rings that are that are very uh, well shaped, and uh, we would expect all these. Like, like with with Mars's atmosphere and all these different evidences we keep finding, they're consistent with the biblical worldview, but not consistent with the naturalistic worldview. That's what I noticed working in the industry for so long. Time and time again, you kept yeah. seeing these things. So all glory so the to God. science consistently confirms the scripture. <laughs> but again, I mean the the science will confirm it, but the evolutionists they'll still come up with a rescuing device to try to save their theory because again it comes down to that worldview issue. How are we interpreting the evidence is what it comes down to. And that really is the key. What is okay. your worldview? What do you believe before you look at the evidence? It's almost like how, how can we take all the people of the world and go, this is the point. You need to understand what your worldview matters and making sure you have a right worldview, which is, I don't know, I, I, I even go back to what we were talking about just a minute ago with the, um, like, where where science is possible and how the logical explanation that you can't do science without the the creator who says i'm going to i'm going to sustain all things everything's going to be held together and i go come on people of the world ah let's get this let's let's get on the same page here and understand this yeah. this basic truth and it's 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 totally understandable because i mean that's how i was when i first when i first became a christian actually um, you know, cause, cause when I became a Christian, I had just got my bachelor's degree in aerospace engineering and I was actually working on my master's degree in aerospace. Uh, I was studying astrodynamics and satellite navigation. Um, so I was used to the big bang evolution millions of years. And I remember when I first became a Christian, I was trying my hardest trying to, um, how does Genesis, you know, kind of relate to all of these different, um, so-called theories. They, they call them theories, but really they're more just ideas, um, opinions. I was trying to figure out how to actually blend these secular ideas with the Bible and having a really hard time doing that. And 
I, I think it took me probably about a year or two to actually finally come around to that Young Earth Creation camp um, until I think it was the Bill and I kind of Ken Ham uh, debate. That's really when um, light bulbs start, start going off for me. I started watching that debate and uh, Ken Ham did a really good job just explaining all those different things to to, to Bill. And um, so if you guys haven't seen that, by the way, I definitely encourage you guys to go check that out. Um, I think it was back in tw 2014, right? Um, I, that sounds about right. I was yeah. there, man. That was that was yeah. awesome. It was a huge, like, I think there was like millions of people that watched um, that night too. So it was a huge event. And one of the things I loved about Ken is is his um, his biblical authority, his stance on biblical authority yes. and preaching the gospel. That's something we say all the time at Answers in Genesis. You know, like we are a biblical authority ministry. Uh, we love equipping people with, with the answers to help defend their faith. But really, we are a gospel-centered ministry. We're all about pointing people to the life-saving message of Jesus Christ and Jesus Christ alone. And that's really what we're all about. You know, it's like you, you, you can convince an unbeliever and atheist all day long about the evidences, about the worldview issues. But, you know, until they have that heart transformation that only comes from God, you know, they're going to still be stuck in their sins. And so really that's what we're called to do. Our number one priority as Christians needs to be the great commission to be preaching the gospel to every single creature. And so, I think that's really what motivated me, um, in case you're curious, what brought me to Answers in Genesis, because that's probably the, one of the most common questions I get all the time is, why did you leave that awesome career of launching rockets into space and launching spacecraft to the sun and all these different things? It's, well, it really cut, came down to just, you know, um, what was it? Matthew chapter 9, verse 37 here. I, I can go ahead and read it for you. Then Please. he said to his disciples, the harvest is plentiful, but the labors are few. Therefore, pray earnestly to the Lord of the harvest to send out labors into his harvest. And so that's really what it came down to for me is, um, you know, I wanted to make sure that I was uh, using my talents, using my skills to the glory of God, to expand God's kingdom, to work for his kingdom and to preach the gospel to every creature and to and, and to just base myself in all of that and also to equip the next generation too. Um, you know, uh, we were actually talking before the show. I have a five-year-old, a three-year-old, and a one-year-old. Uh, my one-year-old actually just turned two on Monday. Uh, and that's really what my passion is, is, is um, you know, of course, I want to focus on my kids. I also want to focus on the next generation, making sure that they're equipped with the answers that they need, um, really, to take back the science industry. Let's take back the aerospace industry. We need more Christians in the aerospace field because, like we were talking about earlier, the Christian worldview, we actually have the basis for science, for knowledge, for logic. So let's get out there. Let's start making the scientific discoveries. Let's start leading the way in science. That's why I try to tell um, young Christians that come up to me all the time, and they're wondering if they should get involved in rocket science, if they should start a career in rocket science. I'm like, absolutely. You, you call yourself a Christian? You you believe in biblical authority? Let's let's go get it. Let, let's go get that industry back. Well, let, let's be the ones leading the way like like we should. And so that's, that's really what it comes down to for me. I love it. Matthew is one of our partners. He says, when I was saved, I was working as an evolutionary biologist, and I can totally relate to Rob's point here. It took me some time to come to terms with young earth creationism. At first, I tried to put the Bible and evolutionary theory together, but it just won't work. And Rob, I have heard that so many times recently uh, with the, the webinar last week uh, with Milt Marcy, with evolutionist friends of mine, a guy named Bill from uh, Texas, Dallas, Texas, was just talking to me. He's like, I he ju he was just at the big apologetic symposium in at uh, uh, in New Orleans at uh, New Orleans Theological Seminary, and he's like, I don't know how these brilliant minds. And he said, I heard some amazing stuff on the resurrection and this and this. I don't know how these brilliant minds can accept and like any kind of old Earth creation that lets death before sin uh, or evo um, theistic evolution. God used evolution. He's like. He's an atheist, and he's going, this makes no sense. Paul Inns, another atheist friend of mine, says the same thing. This doesn't make sense. You cannot, you cannot reconcile man's idea of millions of years in evolution with what God actually said. There's just no way. I think um, what really got me is is, it, is that that term syncretism, if you've heard of that. So fancy word there. Basically, all that means is when you're blending, when you're mixing beliefs together. That's what really convinced me is is once I realized um, taking those man-centered beliefs of evolution, millions of years, Big Bang, which really are religious beliefs, you're taking those religious beliefs and mixing them with your Christianity. That's called syncretism. 
And obviously God does not approve of that. So that's really what got me is, is just that, that mixing of belief systems, man's word over God's word, which is going to be your ultimate authority. Beware lest any man spoil you through philosophy and vain Hello. deceit after the traditions of men, the rudiments of the world, and not after Christ. Uh, Absolutely. Absolutely. Dude, I got to let social media go, but real quick, real quick. Well, no, I got to let, it's already, we're, we're going to run long on our television show. Social media, I want to know what he thinks about Elon Musk and life on Mars. I want to know what he thinks about so many other things. I'm going to continue the conversation with Rob. If you want to continue the conversation with us and actually talk to Rob, you can do that as a Creation Today partner. Come on over to creationtoday.org and partner with us. Help us reach the world. It's unbelievable the amount of people we were able to reach by God's grace through social media, television, podcast, local speaking, all the different ways we go out there in 2022. We are we have one goal for 2023 reach more that's it i want to reach more people in 2023 and you can help us do that so come on over to creationtoday.org highly 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 encourage you to check out everything rob is doing at answers in genesis answers in genesis.org the facebook page answers in genesis follow that are those the two best places or do you have another uh, place that that people follow your work rob yeah, um, answers to genesis.org. That's a great website. That's what I always point people to. I tell people they can spend literally millions of years on our website just researching <laughs> all the different articles we have, um, lots of different topics. Uh, you know, uh, just go into the search bar, just type in whatever you're uh, wondering about in terms of, uh, you know, maybe Big Bang is Big Bang biblical. You can just type in Big Bang. Um, you'll pull up all the articles there and as well as Answers in Genesis Facebook, um, as well as YouTube as well. We have a lot of stuff on YouTube that you can follow along there. Love what you guys are doing on social media. You're blowing it up. It's just, it's amazing to see the outreach that's happening and to see the number of people that are being reached with this truth there. So social media, uh, podcast listeners and television audience, got to let you go. Come on over to creationtoday.org to get full shows, past, present, and future. God bless you guys. See you next week. Oh, by the way, next week, uh, incredible show for you next week. Uh, I asked my friends over at Blue Letter Bible, if you've ever used blueletterbible.com, it's a it's an incredible Bible study tool for free online. The yep. president of Blue Letter Bible, I said, hey, let's start 2023 off talking about how should we study our Bible? I mean, we got all these ways to study science how should we be studying our Bible as, as believers and getting deeper into God's Word? So it's something I want to encourage you with. We're going to hear from, from Jim here this next week on how to study your Bible with Blue Letter Bible. All right, we'll see you then next week at 12 noon Central Time next Wednesday. God bless.